Hello from Alessandro and Abe. We are back. Uh, and we are with uh, another uh, instance of this collection of episodes, um, trying to somehow uh, show, or not justify, just show uh, why we moved to Open Render. Yeah. And in this episode, we want to treat something that it belongs to the, um, how to say, to the ceilings, to the glass ceilings, as mm -hmm. you want to call it. Yeah. So, so or things that we bought, uh, found, found, found limiting mm -hmm. uh, when we, we became more expert users or, you know, more well-versed in creative coding. Mm -hmm. And th yeah, things that we, we found limiting in processing. Mm -hmm. In particular, we want to talk about um, advanced topics like shaders mm -hmm. and uh, how easy is to use them in uh, open render and yeah. how pr basically part of the ecosystems uh, they are while how they still are um, something that needs some work in uh, in processing mm -hmm. and um, and again um, um, this might st stop you or discourage you from incorporating it in mm -hmm. uh, your creation or at least they were discouraging me yeah. at incorporating shaders so easily in the things I'm doing while open render makes this uh, yeah. very easy. I did use many shaders in processing but it is true. It was surprising when I first uh, found out that you can just add like tweak the shaders with just with like one or two lines of code mm -hmm. instead so, of yeah so i think it would make sense to somehow say a few words about these things that you are uh, showing mm -hmm. so basically the the shade style um attribute of the drawer mm -hmm. that remember is the, somehow the engine then that takes into account everything that has to do with drawing mm -hmm. can be uh changed yeah so it, it means i mean in other words it can be customized mm -hmm. and you can customize the way that open render is shading mm -hmm. the object that you're gonna uh, put on the canvas yeah and you can do it with these uh Basically, the fragment transform is the fragment shader, actually. Mm -hmm. And you can customize it with these uh, few lines, which are, I would say, 90, let me say, 80% pure JLSL. And with some, you know, yeah. tweaking here and there, for instance, here, C dot screen uh, under dash under, underscore screen position is a sort of a uniform. Then yeah, they the are back, yeah they are uniforms and they are listed here. Yeah, everything is listed here and uh, uh, all the type of uh, variables that you can access. But yeah, maybe we can start from one of the s very simple one, the yeah. wavy effect. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Um, let me see. I will copy just this code and paste it inside the extend. Mm -hmm. And I have to import the shade style and I have to import the color RGB. Mm -hmm. A. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, let's run this program and see what happens. Right. So now I want to show something mm -hmm. to just to show them how easy it is to modify this type of things. Mm -hmm. I want to add a parameter, mm -hmm. which is uh, the time passing mm -hmm. by, okay. and uh, change uh, add it in the cosine cosine function so that this wave would move. Mm -hmm. So okay. we're gonna add here inside cosine yeah, uh, time. Yeah, something like p underscore yeah time plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we have to add the parameter that we can add by putting parameter, time, time and seconds. Maybe. That's yeah. And now, and now we can see yeah. that the the um, the wave mm -hmm. is moving. Yeah, and this took us like two minutes, yeah. like something like this. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, um, if we wanted to do something like this in uh, processing mm -hmm. this would take more time why uh, well we would have to create the Custom shader files shader. at least a fragment shader file mm -hmm. even we can leave the vertex shader yeah. by default yeah 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 so this would mean actually creating a file mm -hmm. in the data class the data, data folder. folder if i yeah if i don't uh if i remember correctly yeah um <laughs> and uh, and for instance, for, first of all, okay, let's let's try to to do this. Let's try to think about this. <laughs> um, so okay, so now we have a circle, 
and this wavy thing on the back. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Let's try to do the same thing in, in processing. Okay. okay. <laughs> Big challenge. So, um. first of all, as you said, we can use a fragment uh, shader. Yeah. Okay. Now, we know we have to put it in the data folder. Mm -hmm. Do we know the extension of the file? Do we know it should be called? I think you can, I, well, yes. based on what I remember. Yes, exactly. <laughs> now you have to go somewhere shader. and look for it. So there's P shaders, there's load shader. Yeah, but how should it be called like GLSL or not? I think it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I okay. don't know if it says here or not, but you can call it, I think, whatever. I used to call it dot .frag. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> to remember that it was a fragment shader. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. Let's create this and file. And we have to use either P2D or P3D. Mm -hmm. so because it uses OpenGL yeah. in the, the back. By default, it's not using... Uh, not yet. Not even processing for. I, don't thi I think it uses Java 2D mode. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So now we have to find the data folder yeah. of the... And you, I think you can find it from the... I will call. I Custom. will declare this at the top. Yeah. So we need uh, a place to store the shader. Yeah. I will call. Uh, I often call them effects. Effects. <laughs> okay. And inside the setup, we could load shader. Uh -huh. And we need the path. Uh, and I will now call effects. Yeah. Frag. Um, now we have to. Well, I'm gonna save it because I keep hitting save. So. Uh, save it in the TMP folder. Uh, can I or here? Mm, effect? No effects. I don't know. So now it's saved there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go on Sketch, yeah. if I remember, you can show, show Sketch folder. I think show this, sketch folder. I think this is not gonna f work in my computer because it's a bit strange. Okay. Because, but well, I will just go to TMP. Okay. Uh, what was it? Effect. Effects. And data, you have to create uh, now a folder called data. I create a folder called data. And by the way, there is no other way you can do it. You have to do it like this, I think. Well, uh, or normally you have a user interface like a desktop, and but yeah. you still have to... No, 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 no. I'm seeing from processing yeah, to no. load it. Yeah. You will load it in this yeah. data yeah. class. Yeah, okay. but you could put a hard-coded path if you want. Yeah, if like you want, it, yeah, if you want it, probably yes, yeah. But, yeah. but okay. Data, and then here I could do effects.frag. So there's a file there now. Mm -hmm. mm, this was tedious, yeah. so I <laughs> can show yeah. that why... So I now you have to open it up, yeah. create a main function, remember to pass the correct uh, yeah. uniform, blah, blah, blah. So I created a tool mm -hmm. to do these things. So let me delete this effects.frag, mm -hmm. and I created this uh, edit shaders tool, mm -hmm. and I have some templates, so these are the default processing mm -hmm. shaders on the right. Mm -hmm. And I could do a color frag GLSL, and I copy it into my sketch folder. Mm -hmm. And then I can rename it as uh, fx.frag. So otherwise, you have to do all this outside yeah. of processing. Mm -hmm. and, and, then you can edit. and that's it. Yeah, and even, I think, let's see if that works. Uh, where was it? Tools, edit shaders. I think I launched some. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> it still works. Mm -hmm. I did this but years ago. You we can see the part of the of the boilerplate that you need to put. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. So that that should work. Uh, so let me save it now and just draw a circle like we have in the other mm -hmm. program. Uh, circle with divided by two height divided by two. Mm -hmm. What is what size did we use? And if, uh, so it's going to be three three hundred. Yes. It's it's a double. Yeah, 300. Yeah. Let's see if this draws a circle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, ha I should then... Oh, oh I sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I killed the um, program open recent. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then I want to clear the background. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe black. And I have to apply this shader. Mm -hmm. That shader effects, I believe. Mm -hmm. We can look at the example in here. I think that is Becky. Ah, well, here's using filter, yeah. but you can use shader. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that. No, you can use shader, but I think you have to do. Be no, no, you can use shader. I yeah. think you can use shader. That's yeah. it. I just let's see if we make it work. So at least let's run it and see if it still works. Is there? Okay. So now, right. if if. 
uh, I have here. Let's try to change the color and see if that works. Mm -hmm. Vec4, and I will make it, I don't know. Uh, no, I will make it red to see something okay. noticeable. Save it, uh, run. Yes, yeah, okay. It works. Okay, so then we could do something similar. Yeah, but now we first have to know how to pass a uniform for the time that probably is uniform float into the shader. Yeah, how was that? FX. And then you, you have to add uniform float in the shader and then sh the shader class dot uniform uh -huh. dot something. I wanted to see set. Ah, set? Actually. Oh. So, well, this is more or less what you we see? want. Yeah. Um, so... We have, it's called actually FX, we set, we call it time, no? Mm -hmm. Well, to make it exactly, pro, um, open R and the R mm -hmm. adds um, yes. this to distinguish yeah. your, Parameter, your parameters. Yeah. And your buffers. Yeah. Also, but, but here, so we now we pass in seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we have to declare here. Uniform, uniform float. float P time. Yeah. And now we could use that. But now we have to know how to access the screen position. Yeah. Which is, I think, GL the underscore frag, frag chord. Yeah. X. And Y. X, Y. Well, but ah. in this case, we just need X. In just case. Just to make this wavy pattern. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, what should we do? A color. I'm going to make a float. Mm -hmm. mm, K is going to be sign, for example, of this. Plus. Plus the time. time, and I think I want to multiply this by a smaller number, mm -hmm. otherwise it, the pattern is too fine. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then you have to make a color out of this. Yeah, I could put K. No, I was going to put K, 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 but that's maybe not no, funny. No, not funny at <laughs> all. <laughs> so, uh, K. What does that do? Okay, yeah. it's pretty similar. So it's pretty similar, yeah. but you realize the boilerplate behind, and we were using your tool. <laughs> yes. So yeah. Um, if, if we didn't have my tool, then you somehow have to know where to find this basic code. Exactly. Which I found in the source code of processing. Exactly. And, and there's other, yeah, other things, which is, it's a bit more tedious to mm -hmm. pass. You have to declare the uniform. Yes and then use the uniform, and, and here so it happens. So there is always a go back and forth, the IDE and the file where the mm -hmm. shader is, while in this case you stay inside yeah. the IntelliJ, yeah. which is much more comfortable, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. Okay? So this already shows how, how to say, um, how more uh, um, intertwined with um, the the GPU side is mm -hmm. more intertwined with the CPU side mm -hmm. because you can write these uh, inline shaders yeah. that are very very easy. Mm -hmm. So like if I want to test the wavy pattern or whatever you know idea I have, I'm not gonna create a file and then I'm mm. not gonna like it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, I wasted time. I'm so frustrated. It's just very easy to. Ah, you <laughs> want to call them, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were just separating to make it a bit more, well, yeah. actually wavy, I would call it their effects. Yeah. So the, this is effects, mm -hmm. and here would be effects that parameter, or no? What have I done funny? I'm, I'm missing a bracket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think it did work. Yes, I was making a bit more similar. So mm -hmm. this is our shader, basically. Exactly. And um, so, yeah, you can see that applying a shader is almost like applying a color. Mm -hmm. It's more or less the same as drawer.fill, yeah. but it's actually drawer.shade style. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can show them, we can create a curve and see how we can change easily the color around the curve uh -huh. with uh, the... Um, with the uniform that goes along the curve, okay. right? Yeah, this would be also not so easy to do in other you environments. Know, this would be quite uh, challenging. So just let's create... Uh, um, why don't we do it with a rectangle? Mm -hmm. Okay, take a rectangle, take All the contour. Rectangle. Well, actually, I can do bounds. No, drawer. Drawer dot bounds. Bounds, offset, 
uh, I'm gonna take the screen and offset it 100 pixels inward, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna take a, take a contour. Exactly. Contour. Okay. okay. So now, yeah. So we could do draw that. Mm -hmm. C, no, R. But now we are not going to see anything there, right? No, maybe it's black also because the mm -hmm. contour. Ah, we, the stroke is null here. Mm -hmm. but if, what if I make it white? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, we will not want to apply the effect to the to the, to the field, no? Yeah. 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 Exactly. So we can say we don't want this. Okay. And but we want to um, change the color. Yeah. So yeah. this. Here we were uh, changing the fill, but yeah. we want to change the stroke. Mm -hmm. So now, <laughs> that's exactly. nice. Exactly. Now so the effect yeah. is applied only on the border. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, and you wanted to, should we make the wavy pattern go al along? Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to make it a bit thicker. Drawer mm -hmm. stroke weight 3.0. Okay. And now it's just a matter to choose the right uh, uniform. New uniform, which, what is it? Uh, like we uh, have here uh, a bunch of uniforms, which is. Down, uh, down, 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 down. Constant. Uh, uh, contour, contour position. Contour position, yes. Yeah. This is a uniform that changes along the contour. Mm -hmm. So if I do this. And you see <laughs> that the wavy pattern is along the contour. Yeah. To do the similar thing in processing mm. would be hard. Yeah, you have, have to, to change hack. The I, I've done it, but it's not you trivial. You have to change the line shader, no? Yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. Um, so th these simple examples already show you how it's easy and fun to explore mm -hmm. in when, when it comes to these advanced uh, techniques like yeah. shaders mm -hmm. and how it's not because but i mean essentially because processing was not meant really yeah. for this type of things i think originally it didn't have i don't, I don't know at what point it got custom shaders customers yeah. shaders yeah yeah so it's originally was originally not meant for that and it's understandable yeah. because these are advanced topics yeah. but if you advance enough you mm -hmm. might feel that this is uh, stifling your creativity because mm. maybe you look at something like this mm -hmm. and you don't know how it's made. Yeah. And you think that something pixel by pixel is being made in the CPU <laughs> and you will go very frustrated <laughs> very quickly mm. because, you know, it's not something that you can achieve reasonably yeah. uh, by going pixel by pixel, mm -hmm. okay? Hmm. And and then actually one last thing that we can uh, uh, like uh, we want to comment on uh, on it, all of these we have seen like we, we are seeing like a mountain of uh, uncomfortableness yes, <laughs> while, while going right. I think that's how we structured this. Uh, I'd say that the the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. But I, for me, there is now we arrive at sort of uh, the top where there are things that we cannot change okay? oh, yeah, yeah. so there are some aspect of uh, processing and the way processing deals with uh, um, lower level frameworks like OpenGL that you cannot change mm. for instance one of these things is the, the the basically you cannot when you pass an image uh, to processing or like I mean even to open render these things on the back is what is called the texture or in OpenGL is called the texture mm -hmm. and texture have uh, uh, they represent I mean is anything colors mm -hmm. with um, values from 0 to 1 mm -hmm. okay but the of course we are in a computer so mm -hmm. the, it's not a real spectrum a continuous spectrum from zero to one you have to decide how many uh, values there are between zero and one okay mm -hmm. this is what is called the bit depth or mm -hmm. whatever the point is that in processing these things it's fixed to a certain amount which is eight whatever eight bits. bits yeah eight bits because of this, when you try to smoothly change colors, you will not be able to do it with such a precision that if you have 16 bit or 32 bits. Mm -hmm. okay? So this is particularly evident when you try to do uh, um, um, a fading mm 
Yeah, I think this happens to. I've seen this question many times. Many times that like, you fade objects and then a kind of weird artifacts remains on the canvas. It, it doesn't fade to it, it black does, or white. It doesn't white. fade to black because at certain point mm. it reaches the last value between that and zero, and you cannot go below. Mm. You just cannot go below by multiplying by you know the given uh, the in the, the representation of the float you multiply b to like 0 0.9 0 0.99 whatever mm -hmm. okay and this took me a lot of frustration like <laughs> when i was using processing because i thought i was doing something intrinsically wrong but it, it, it turns out it's not the case it's the fact that the way uh, it is it interfaces with opengl it doesn't it, by construction, does not allow you. You needed more bits. <laughs> I needed more bits. Now, the interesting thing about uh, open render is that you can decide how these uh, things are uh, uh, configured. That probably we can easily show. Mm -hmm. This thing in OpenGL, I mean, texture in OpenGLs are attached, um, are managed through something that is called the color buffer. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it's a buffer with colors. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if we create a color buffer, um, you need, of course, a width and a height because that's a, a piece of uh, image. But if you look and into it, you can pass a format and a type. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you pass a type or a format, we can uh, pass yeah, both. We can, we can ask both. You see that the format tells you which type. How much uh, channels you will contain? For mm -hmm. instance, the first one will contain only one channel, the red channel. Mm -hmm. the red channel. Um, this is good for grayscale images. Exactly. You can have two channels, you can have three channels, three channels with the alpha, and it's up to you to decide. But if you look at type, you can see that color type now will, will allow you to use the amount, the, the, like, you know, the, the depth mm -hmm. of the texture. And you can see you can use a float 32. The default. You can use, the default is an unsigned integer with 8-bit. Mm -hmm. And this is what uh, processing is using behind the hood. Mm -hmm. And this makes it impossible to do this fading, mm -hmm. like, in a nice and uh, smooth way. For instance, if you work with a float 32, this is no problem. Mm -hmm. Be mindful. These will, uh, you know, require more memory on your GPU and all these type of things. Mm -hmm. But you have the possibility to choose this. Yeah. And as an advanced user, I want to choose this. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm happy that I don't have to. Mm -hmm. But I, w if I want to choose this, I don't. I mean, I have to be able to do this. Yeah. To me, that's the. Uh, this I, I understand that this is very technical, mm -hmm. but. If you work enough with shaders and you are, uh, if you are in all these kind of smoothie images that you see on the internet, things that flow, you know, you will find this because yep. in a way or in another, you will, you know, uh, end up looking, I mean, uh, like to say, end up reaching the ceiling. And this is something that you cannot change. Yeah. This is something that you cannot, how to say, um, make a way out with better practices or whatever. And another thing, just to finish, that uh, it's very hard to do in processing is using this type of shaders called compute shaders, mm -hmm. which basically are a way to perform computation at the GPU level. And these, I don't know any easy way to use it in processing. No, yeah. I, I, I don't know if it's... I haven't I, seen examples. I don't know if it's possible. And I don't know any easy way to do it. In Open Render, you can. Even the guide has a documentation about that. Mm -hmm. So you can look at it and you can try it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think we understand that these are uh, all very advanced topics. But we can promise you that these are all topics that if you want to do real-time installations, you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. If you want to do things that, you know are at a certain level of, uh, how to say, mm, I don't want to say professionalism because you, you can do very minimalist thing yeah. and be happy with that, but at a certain level of uh, graphical, um, I don't know how to explain that. They but, look nice enough. <laughs> but, um, but some parts are easy to use. Even even if they're advanced, for example, you can use... Yeah, even the, if they're advanced, you can use filters. The, there's lots of filters. Yeah. Uh, so you can apply all kinds of blue, blurs. Blur. There's many types of blurs. And yeah. 
uh, many time of types of visual effects. Yeah. And in particular, I find, I find that in particular for real-time applications, mm. this is very good. Because, you know, the point it's, is that... It's the only way. It's I the guess. only way, yeah. actually, because you cannot render it and then work with it in any, you know, post-processing software. Mm -hmm. Which I find it, like, interesting for, you know, in a way, they allow me to prototype very quickly because I don't need to save the file, save all the images, make a video, mm. load it in, uh, you know, DaVinci, whatever, <laughs> yeah. and then look at that and decide, mm, that's not really what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I can easily prototype and see, oh, a blur would work. Yeah. Ah, nice, very nice. Yeah. Now I will work on it. So mm. you see, you can experiment also with these, uh, um, like, advanced topics. Mm -hmm. um, in a, in a quick way, and to me, this is really important yeah. because, you know, motivation and time, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a scarce resource <laughs> and you want to use it properly. Yeah. Um, but I would say that we covered many of the reasons why yeah. we moved. So, of course, one can look at a lot of code examples. We, and you can look, we can look at a lot of code examples, but I, I think, I hope we gave an idea yeah. where for us the... Uh, what we needed from the tools, what we needed from the API, and what we needed from the language. Yeah. And I think for each of these, we have given a little uh, uh, snippet mm -hmm. of why we like uh, yeah. Opera Render. I hope you found it useful. I hope you find it useful and uh, that you join the community, join the, the forum. Like It's full of people that we reply to all <laughs> the... Because we know many things. We also exp uh, experiment ourselves. So we are happy to share the thing we found. And no question is a stupid question on the forum. Yeah, and uh, have fun. So we'll see you in a, another conversation. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed this series. Bye. <laughs> see you. Ciao, ciao.